Avery wants to know, how can she keep the cost of her items up to date based on the latest purchase rate from a given build? Let's find out on today's Azaz. Welcome to Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. Today, our question comes from Avery Wheeler, who asks, is there a way to automate the cost price of an item based on the latest bill for that item? And absolutely, Avery, yes, there is. We're going to create this with a simple workflow rule and custom deluge function. Let's get started. Under my settings, I'm going to want to scroll down to automation, and I'm going to create a workflow action. Then under workflow actions, over here, I have email alerts, in-app notifications, field updates, webhooks, and custom functions. We're going to set up a custom function. Now, I've already set one up, but if you were to create a brand new one, you would simply click create new custom function over here and select the function name, and you would want to select the bills module. But like I said, we already have ours created, so I will open that one up and show you what it looks like. So whenever you create a custom function in Zoho Books or Zoho Inventory or Zoho Subscriptions, unlike other Zoho apps, the input arguments of your custom function are predetermined by the system. You usually get a map of whatever record you're triggering this on, as well as a map for your organization's details, as well as a map about the individual user's details. So whoever is logged in at the time that the automation is triggered. Now let's look at what we actually have in the code editor. As you might notice, we actually don't even need to really get any specific bill information other than its line items. We then sort through those line items, grab the item ID, and we're gonna update the item record with the bill's purchase rate. So let's go through this line by line. First off, we get the organization ID for our Zoho Books or Inventory organization. This is pulled from the organization map that is one of our input arguments, and we're going to get organization underscore ID. To see what any of these maps contain, you can click on them and see an example of what a record would look like. So for example, here on organization, I can see that my organization ID is tied to this text value of organization underscore ID. We're going to need to use this organization ID a little bit later in the script. Then we need to get the line items that are associated to this bill. The line items, of course, being each individual product on the billing record. Then we're setting up a for each loop. This means that it is going to go through that list of items one at a time and execute whatever is between these two curly brackets. So the first thing we do is we set what the name of each object, each piece, each record inside of this list is going to be called. In this case, because each line item represents a different product or item on this bill, I'm just going to use the word. So now every time I use the word item in here, if I click on bill, and scroll down to line items, an item would include one of these records that has a name, an SKU, and what I really want is this item underscore ID, and scroll down, and I want this rate, because since we're talking about the rate on a bill, that is the purchase price. So coming back to the inside of my for each loop, I start by grabbing my item ID, by doing item.get item underscore ID. This is the ID number that we need to use in order to update the product a little bit later in the loop. Then I need to get the cost or purchase rate by doing item.get. Then I have to create something called a map. A map is a collection of keys and values. Keys being sort of a, an identifying label with an associated value. And this is where in Deluge, we package different parameters or uh, information data that we need to pass in in order to update or change or create a record. And this map only requires one key and one value, and that is the purchase underscore rate, where purchase underscore rate is the purchase price as it appears on the item record in Zoho Books. And here I will assign the variable cost, which remember was our item.get rate. Then with that update parameters map, I'm going to 
execute the zoho.books.update record function so that we can actually update our item. In the update record task, there are four input arguments required. First is the module that we're trying to update. In this case, we're updating an item, followed by the organization ID, which we got earlier, the very beginning of our script, then the item ID, the ID of the specific product that we're trying to update, and then the update parameters, which was this little map that we built that contains the new updated purchase rate. And this will be executed for each line item present in the bill record. And that is all we have to set up for this custom function. Once I have that set up, I will click on save. Now that I have my custom function workflow action in place, now we have to attach it to a workflow rule. Here under automation, I'm going to click on workflow rules. And here I actually already have a workflow rule set up. And I'll show you what that rule looks like. When you create a workflow rule, you give your workflow rule a name, and then you assign it to a specific module. Once you've assigned the module, it can't be changed. If you have to change the module, you'll have to create a brand new workflow and delete the old one. In this case, we're running this off of the bills module because we want this workflow to trigger, even though it's updating items, it's being triggered off of an activity in the bills module. And I'm gonna have this trigger whenever a bill is created. I could adjust this to be whenever a bill is created or edited in case purchase prices have to be updated. But for now, I'm just going to mark it as created. You could add additional filters if there are only certain bills that you think should apply. Say you want to select that this should only apply to bills that come from a certain vendor or that come at a certain time of the year. I'll go ahead and leave this blank so it'll apply to any and all bills that are created. And then here under actions, I'm going to set up what are my immediate or scheduled actions that are going to take place. I'm going to do just one immediate action. Under type, you can select which action you want. We have a custom function built, so I select that. Then I select the custom function, which will be update item costs from bill that we made earlier. I don't need to add any time actions, so I will just click save. Now that our workflow rule is in place, let's test it out. So let's take a look at an item. For example, we have example item. Example item has a purchase rate of $15. Well, what if we make a bill where that purchase rate changes? I'm gonna to go to purchases, click on this plus sign to start a new bill, set an example vendor, set a dummy bill number, determine a bill date, and now I will put my example item in here. Now, right now, it's pulling the default purchase rate. Let's say that this has to be updated, that the purchase rate, maybe we're lucky, and it's gone down all the way to $5. I'll go ahead and set that rate to five, and then I can either save as a draft or save as open. I'll go ahead and save it as open. Now that my $5 item has been accounted for in the bills, Let's go check on the item and see what its purchase rate is. Come back to items, and here under example item, let's refresh the page, and after a quick page refresh, now we can see that the cost price of my example item has changed from 15 to $5. And that is how you set up an automation for updating your item based on the latest bill for that item. We hope you enjoyed today's Azaz, Avery, I certainly hope that you're a more confident coder after this one. And as always, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful or think someone else will find it useful, please give us a like and subscribe, share it on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, and we'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to visit Zanata.com to check out our resource library, the backlog of other Azaz questions, as well as joining our online community of Club Zanata. Have a good day, everyone.